the light of Christ. It pierces the darkness. And it shines in the dark so that all may know hope and peace and joy in their hearts. For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked in this land and their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and their spirituality. And we are gathered on the lands represented by the Robinson Huron Treaty 61 of 1850, the traditional territory of the Serpent River and Mississaugee people and we acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. And may we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its people. I call you to worship with words from 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 22. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Let us worship, hoping, rejoicing, praying, giving thanks. Let us pray. O oh God, who, you who love justice and truth, we remember your enduring covenant that promises good news to the poor the brokenhearted, and the captives. You promise comfort to all who mourn and a mantle of praise and plays of discouragement. Help us to find our restoration in you. We are a blessed people, and we rejoice and praise you, O God. Grow righteousness and praise within us this day. Amen. And our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, the beloved prophet, chapter 61, verses 1 to 4, and then 8 to 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed and to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me in the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself in a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before the nations.
Advent is a time to prepare. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight the way of our God. During Advent, we prepare our eyes to see the light of Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight the way of our God. During Advent, we prepare our hearts to receive the word of Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. During Advent, we prepare to share the joy of Christ. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight the way of the Lord. During Advent, we prepare to embrace the promise of Christ. This morning, we light three candles. The first candle reminds us that Advent is a time to wait upon the Lord. We wait for the unfolding of God's plan in accordance with God's time. The second candle reminds us that Advent is also a time to watch. During Advent, we eagerly watch for God's presence and work in our world. As we light the third candle, we also remember that Advent is a time to prepare. During Advent, we prepare ourselves in heart, soul, and strength to welcome our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who has and is and to come. Let each of us ask God to prepare us to celebrate the glory of Christmas. pray. God in heaven, as we continue our Advent journey, help us to be people who wait for you, watch for you, and through your spirit be prepared for you. Continue to shine your light in our lives as we look at all you have done, all you are doing, and all you will do. Amen.
Our second reading is that beautiful uh, portion of scripture called the Magnificat, found in Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 56. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor upon the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with His arm. He has scattered the proud in their thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Amen. A reading from the book of John, chapter 1, verses 1 to 9. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light 
of all people. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And there was a man sent from God whose name was John, and he came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. And may God add God's blessing to the reading of God's word. Let us pray. God of comfort and promise, we pray for the brokenness of the world, for the hungry and the hurting, the disappointed and the angry. We pray for your healing and restoration. Help us to be involved in creating communities that actively care for the broken. We pray for those who mourn and live with grief. May we be a presence and a solace. We lift to you those discouragements we have experienced this past week. Discouragement in our families, our friendships, our jobs, even discouragement in ourselves. We lift to you, O oh God, the different things that drag us down. Restore our faith in you. Restore our faith in ourselves and each other. We have different hurts and worries and fears, and we name them in our hearts and ask for help to trust you with them. Bring us comfort. Plant the good news deep within our hearts. Help us to see your restoration of the world when we become a shy or unsure young child, when we listen to the doting story and we share the joy of a grandparent. Help us to see your promise of healing in the crusty exterior of someone genuinely trying to be kind. And as we grow in faith, we pray for the ability to rejoice always and to pray continually. And in these shortening days and lengthening nights, may we be reminded that Jesus came into the world to shine your light. May we remember that his light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. And may we remember that we, like John the Baptist, are to witness, to testify to the light. 
may we persevere in hope that the true light, which enlightens everyone, is coming into the world. Thanks be to you, O God. And we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. When we make an offering to God, we are indeed giving thanks. We are acknowledging God's abundant grace and mercy and provision for us. In offering the gifts from our hands and our hearts and our minds, we are giving thanks with love. So let us make our offerings to God. Let us pray. Gracious giving God, we thank you for this beautiful landscape that we call home. We thank you for changing seasons. We thank you for Christmas lights that illumine the way home. We thank you for homemade treats that link us to Christmas's past. We thank you for families open to celebrate differently this year. We thank you for worshiping communities that lift our spirits. And receive now all the gifts we bring, that good news would go out from this place, so that newness of life might spring up. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen.